Welcome to the Aqua Lounge. This is Scott, industry expert, aquascaper, manufacturer. Aquarium nerd. Aquarium nerd. So we're at the SR Acoustic Aqua Lounge, as you said. This space we created for people to come relax, hang out, get inspired, and then local clubs meet here. What is SR Aquaristic? The reason why we came up with the name SR Aquaristic is because many years ago, a pretty spectacular man gave me my first start in the aquarium industry, and that was Rolf C. Hagen. And I don't think he really knew what to do with me. So when I started, he said, we will call you the Aquaristic Product Manager. That's where the name came from. So Aquaristic in Germany means everything to do with aquariums. This is a GFRC table, which is glass fiber reinforced concrete. You'll notice a lot of our stuff, we use that material. It's super durable. I mean, you can spill on it. You could soak it underwater if you wanted. It was originally used for outdoor use. And this was a collaboration between Zero Edge Aquarium and SR Aquaristic. What are these? These are some really cool concept aquariums. What we wanted to do is create a very simplistic stand. As you can see, there's no doors on the front, so it's almost like a pedestal that you would see in an art gallery. All right, we'll move over to this set of tanks. We call these our tabletop stands. What are all these? Wabikusa. Where does that name come from? Um, it comes from Japan. Basically, it's a soil ball, and a lot of people, what they'll do is they'll take aquatic plants and then plant them in the soil ball, create a high humidity situation until the plants convert over to a terrestrial. They'll remove the top or, or just keep a higher humidity and they'll grow in that soil ball. And so that's how it starts. And then once it's ready, you would move it over to like a terrarium Correct. or something like that. I mean, you can do all kinds of great things with different types of hardscape, different types of wood. Mm -hmm. You can put wood or pebbles on the shelf. I mean, you can make a beautiful display that's inexpensive um, with this type of soil ball. These are our deco tank aquariums. So it's an all-in-one kit. We also have them where skate material comes with them. So for people who aren't super creative but want a cool scape, we will actually scape it for them mm -hmm. and in a complete kit. And these are kind of cool because the tops open up so you can get inside. These are our luminariums. We have two different versions. We have one which is terrarium, which is actually easier to keep, and then an aquarium version, which can be a lot of fun and has a lot of options. This is our African cichlid tank. This is using our elephant skin stone. I really love this tank because the fish are always, always breeding and you can see where they've dug out and created little caves. It's really cool because when you feed, you see fry coming out all the time. So it's always changing this aquarium. This tank is really cool. Neon tetras, java fern, some floaters. And they got, what are these, quarries? Quarry cats, yeah. Yeah. But lava rock and some spider wood. What is this fish right here? That is a crebenza. There, there's a male and a female. They're always breeding in there. So these are melon discus. There's five in there, so they tend to just kind of hang out in the leaves. We have a ton of rummy nose tetras as well. Tails. You can really tell if that fish is happy, because if it's not happy, the rummy nose is not predominantly as red, and so it's sort of a gauge of your water quality. I love that fish too. And then just some basic crypts. We put them in sort of an order to create zones for the rummy nose to school around them. Why are the plants in this tank looking so much greener than any It's just a thing? different different type of plants. In here we're using the Adelite as well. This one I'm running kind of old school, so I'm using a pH controller, I'm using CO2. Over here, this is the saltwater tanks. Yep. We got two tanks, they both have the cool aquaristic stands. What is this thing that you're holding? A feeding ring. So a lot of times in marine aquariums where you have lots of flow, the food will spin around and you lose a lot of it on the overflow. So with this, you can just put flake food or frozen food inside and it'll slowly dissipate and the fish start to learn to come and get it and you can adjust 
the water level as well. These are your tanks? Yep, I think we have 20 different tanks. Low iron, rimless glass aquariums, really nice silicone, beautiful, beautiful tanks. You guys manufacture like so many different things. Yeah, we manufacture quite a bit of different accessories and products. So these are your pumps, your skimmers. Dosing containers, we have bio pellet reactors, calcium reactors, refractometers. So if you come here, you can literally pick out all these exotic pieces of wood and hardscape that are coming from. Mostly out of China, Philippines, Indonesia, Malaysia. This is a whole warehouse full of aquarium supplies, yep. hardscape, woods, rocks. So this is our WYSIWYG room. So when we see an exceptional piece of hardscape, we'll pull it out and we'll number them and then we'll put them on our website. This is really cool. So this is an inspiration from my pond days. You can see there's several waterfalls that we built into this. I sit all of the dragon stone in the areas where I think will make a really cool waterfall. So I work a ton of hours, you know that. I work here full-time during the day, and night I work another full-time doing the same thing. I do it because I love it. I mean, I couldn't imagine myself doing anything else. I couldn't imagine my life without an aquarium. It's just such an important part of my life, and it's my form of relaxation. Every aquarium that's set up, to me, is a piece of art. The thing I love about it most is it's living art, and it changes every day. So every day you look at your aquarium, especially if you have live plants and corals, that is a living, breathing piece of nature, and every day there's something interesting. Like, what would you like to accomplish by the time you're done with your career? No, I don't think I'll ever be done with my career because, for me, it's a career, but it's also something that I love. I would just like to inspire people to keep planted in reef aquariums. That's, that's all I really want. I'm not in this to get rich. I just want to enjoy the hobby, enjoy the customers that we get to interact with on a daily basis, try and provide something of quality into the industry. And for me, that's, that's plenty. All right, guys, we've come to the end of the tour. Scott, thanks. Thanks, George. Thank you, man. This place is awesome. You're able to come here if you'd like. It is open to the public. You can see the showroom for yourself. We're here again in Elgin, Illinois. You can come here, you can see it for yourself. I think it's well worth it. You're gonna be inspired and you're definitely gonna wanna make your aquarium better. Remember to keep those nitrates low. George, out. <laughs>